Now 250,000, now I'm gonna get 275, high, I'm gonna get 275, three. Now 300,000, now three and a quarter, 325, high, I'm gonna get three and a quarter, I'm gonna get 325, now half, now I'm gonna get 300. And hello again from Dallas, Texas. It's the Mike McGavel Jones Show from the corner of the Dallas North Tollway and the LBJ Freeway. And we welcome our guest today, Lance Brown. Hey, thank you for having me. That's absolutely an honor to have you here. Lance Brown uh, is an artist. Um, uh, there's a lot of people in the Dallas-Fort Worth area who've seen uh, Lance but probably didn't know him or they saw him, and uh, but they saw him at an event. They saw him for one night. Um, he's very involved in the uh, philanthropic areas of, of churches and schools and uh, fundraising events uh, through, throughout the country, not just here, but I mean, that's where we, we came across each other. And so um, uh, Lance, let's just get right into it. I'd like to, I'd like to lo know a little bit about everybody before I talk sure. about wh exactly what they do. And we're gonna, we're gonna share some information about your, uh, your life and what you do and what drives you and what makes you great at what you do. So sure. uh, you are how old? I'm 40. 40 years old. Yeah. That's a magic number, I understand. But I only look 30, right? You do look yeah. 30. Yeah. I keep it young. <laughs> well, God's taking care of yeah. you. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you're 40 years old, and you were born where? I was born in uh, Dallas, actually. You're born in Dallas. Yeah. I grew up south of Dallas in a little town called Red Oak, yeah. which is in Ellis County. Sure. And so uh, went to went to grade school, high school, all my life there. and. Then uh, moved back to Dallas when I went to college. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, tell me about your parents. Tell me what what they did. Yeah, my parents are still there. My my dad was a Dallas police officer, mm -hmm. and uh, my mom was a registered nurse. Right. O B G Y N. Okay. So she's delivering babies and yeah, making the world a better place. And, and he's uh, trying to he's trying to save everybody. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Well, that's a daunting task today. It is. I don't recommend yeah. that for everybody. Well, but. he's he's since retired, so he's on the good side now. Yeah, that's good. So, so now he's retired. Is she still working, or is she retired? No, they're both retired. They're both retired. Mm -hmm. Well, they're living the they're they're living the dream, as they we are. say in America. Yeah. yeah. So you uh, you go to where, what high school did you go to? Red Oak High School. Uh huh. And then you went to college where? At the Art Institute of Dallas. All right. Tell me about that. Tell me about that experience. Well, since I didn't get a baseball scholarship, um, <laughs> I, I went to art school, which I think was a good choice. Um, I did get a small scholarship uh, for the Art Institute. It was a two-year program, which I liked. I mean, it was just straight through. Mm -hmm. And so I was done in two years, and, and I got a, a job in the corporate world doing graphic design. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's what I started my career doing. And up to that point, I had never painted mm -hmm. in my life. I'd always been good at art, drawing, things like that, yep. but uh, never tried my hand at painting until a couple of years after I graduated. When I was a kid, back in the 30s, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, when I was a kid, uh, I specifically recall this because this was a big deal. Back in the 60s, I remember going to, uh, of course, people didn't just go to McDonald's. They went to cafes and, mm -hmm. and uh, diners. But I remember a big and truck stops. That was that's where you would stop, and I just remember that they used to have these um, matchbooks, and on the back of the matchbook, it they were trying to get people to come to art school, and it would say, "Can you draw this?" Mm -hmm. And it had a phone number, or probably a, a phone number to call or somewhere to mail. Yeah. But I just remember that was so funny. It was like, like it would be like a picture of a, a German Shepherd or something. Mm -hmm. You know, just really. I mean, almost I've, anybody could draw what was on that matchbook. I, I could have drawn that. I've seen those, yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. pretty cool. They still use that today. Dude, that's a good mm -hmm. hook. Yeah. So where is the Art Institute? It's off of Park Lane and 75. Park Lane and 75. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you get through, and you get in the corporate world, yeah. and you're doing graphic design. Yes, sir. What kind, of, what kind of stuff were you doing? Well, my first job was at Dr. Pepper. Yeah. And so... I mean, it was it was great first job. Um, Dr. Pepper's a huge sponsor around here of all the major sports teams. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was designing ads for game day programs, 
billboards for the teams. Cool. Um, and which is something that that uh, I was really proud of. You know. Sure. I could I could go to the games and see my artwork all over the stadium. Ah, I think it's cool. And uh, that was that was just a, a really neat thing. And um, what else? Uh, the Dallas Stars were really hot back then, and yep. they won the cup back in the '90s. Back in '99. Mm-hmm. And so, got to experience part of that. And uh, so I, what I was all, there at Dr. Pepper for a couple of years. Yeah. What, yeah. what what all teams did, were you working with besides the Stars? Stars, the Dallas Cowboys, uh, Texas Rangers, and the Mavericks. Very cool. So mm-hmm. you did all the majors. Oh yeah. 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 That's really cool. Um, did you have any anybody in particular that inspired you to do any of this, or this was this just you driven? Uh, it, when it comes to art, my mom was a, a brilliant artist. She she's got drawings that she did in grade school that rival anything I ever did. I mean, she just had a natural ability. Yeah. And uh, she she never pursued it, but I was always inspired by her work. You know, I w- she had a drawer full of drawings, and I would just always be in there looking at those drawings and. Mm-hmm. You know, trying to do my own drawings, and as kids do, they take them to their parents. Hey, look at what I did! Sure. And so, well, I remember they really nurtured that. Sure. About two or three years ago, I'd say probably three years ago, uh, you and I had lunch mm-hmm. over in Arlington, and um, I think Arlington has had a. Uh, well, what had happened is you you did an event mm-hmm. that I was working, and I, to be honest with you, I'm not sure. What event it was i remember what it was do you yeah what was it grace grace mm-hmm. you know i wondered about that it crossed my mind that it might have been grace mm-hmm. but i wasn't sure so i didn't yeah. blurt that out so yeah. shout out to grace yeah there you go yeah we're getting ready to, to return to grace again this year yeah and uh, like most fundraising events um uh, from our perspective as an auctioneer doing the live auction um most groups uh, love you uh, for a year or two, maybe three, and then they go, well, okay, well, we're going to try something new, and mm-hmm. then and then if, if if things work, that's great, and if they don't, then you come back, and you, it's really, it's it's almost like the playoffs every year. You, you never know if you're going to make the playoffs or not, mm-hmm. you know. Um, in your situation, you, you have such a unique um, thing that you do. Do you get a lot of repeat business, or uh, tell me how, and people don't really know what you do yet, so I've kind of sure. held back on that, yeah. but I want you to think about that question. Okay. Um, so you leave the graphics deal, and then what happens? Tell me what happened after that. Well, while while I was at uh, that first job, I got in this routine of going to work every day for eight hours, and then I'd come home and watch about five hours of TV, and I, at a certain point, it, I just realized I'm wasting my talent. You know, I had forgotten about my uh, love for art. And so I started uh, this painting journey. I I didn't know what I was going to do, but I decided to go out and buy some paints and and give it a try. And something that always held me back was uh, the fact that I'm also colorblind. Mm Mm-hmm. And so it's, I've been I've been accused of that in the clothing that I wear. Yeah, I'm not allowed to dress myself. <laughs> I can't, I, yeah. I, and I cannot tell the difference. And, and those that know me well mm-hmm. will laugh about this, but I cannot tell the difference between navy blue and black. I yeah. mean, it's just all oh. dark to me. Yeah, and but it's not Same a good com, not a good combination. I need what the granimals is that where they match your clothes or something? I don't know. My <laughs> wife does it for me. <laughs> well, there you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So you're colorblind, and that kind of. And yeah. it throws it into a different – well, did that affect your work at Dr. Pepper? It didn't. Uh, I learned how to use the computer to get the desired results. Mm-hmm. And so even if it didn't look right visually, I knew that the, the numbers were right because each color is assigned a number. Yep. And so paint, I learned how to – Paint by number guy. Uh, yeah, I learned how to work <laughs> my way around it yep. and, and hide that. Yep. It's not something you want on your resume. Mm-hmm. Um, the colorblind artist. Yeah. I don't know. It well, might be okay. Now it is. Mm-hmm. Now it is because of the work that I'm doing now. It's okay. You know? All right. So you're, you're, you, you have this thing, but, but, you, but you know how to identify the colors. Mm-hmm. So, so then tell me what happens. So um, I started painting, and, and before long I had um, people asking to buy my artwork. And so I started selling a few wh- paintings. What were you painting? I was – well, when I first started painting, I painted – pictures that I liked. I'm a big Vincent Van Gogh fan. And so 
when I was teaching myself how to paint, I would look at those paintings and emulate them. And that's how I taught myself how to paint. And so um, when, when people learned of my ability, they would bring me a painting that they liked and say, hey, can you recreate this? So I started out just recreating artwork of others. And then I started doing some uh, landscapes and abstracts and just trying my hand at everything. Now, was this, um, and what year did you start doing? When, wh when did you leave Dr. Pepper? Well, um, around 01? I still stayed in the corporate world, though, after I left Dr. Pepper. Okay. And so I was in the corporate world for 15 years. Wow. Yeah. And I, I was just painting on the side. And so I left Dr. Pepper in 2001 and uh, went to work for Radio Shack Corporate in Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. And I stayed there for about six years and bounced around a little bit after that. Were you doing graphics for them? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good old Radio Shack. Uh, yeah. Tandy Corporation. Yes, sir. Wow. That's, well, cr that's crazy that, you know, what's happened to them mm -hmm. in the last 30 years. And it's a perfect example of, of uh, staying current mm -hmm. and um, having leadership that sees change yeah. and makes change yeah. appropriately. Um, I never thought that they would be in the situation they were yeah. that they ultimately have uh, happened. Well, it was it was a sad day uh, when we got laid off. Yeah, yeah. It it actually got some news coverage. We were laid off with an email. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, very we, personal. We, we wouldn't want to be too close. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there probably was some road rage that day. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, I just refused to go to work. <laughs> you know. I'm, so you. Uh, so you're still you're still working, making a living, but mm -hmm. you're doing your stuff on the side. Mm -hmm. Were you doing all oil or were you doing acrylics? What do you, I was what doing, you doing a mixture of both. Yeah, you know, just trying my hand at, at a little bit of everything. Did you ever do any charcoal or anything? Mm -hmm. Just try. And, yeah, I did in college. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you we, tried everything. We learned a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I really was drawn towards acrylics. Mm -hmm. Acrylic is is my medium of choice, uh, just because of the way that it flows. You can dilute it with water yep um, and it dries fast so you can work fast yep so uh, you're married mm -hmm. and you got married what year got married in 2000 you married that, my lot high of, school sweetheart a lot of things happening yeah you, know, you get married you know you start a job yeah yeah painting around mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. and uh, she's always been my biggest fan biggest supporter yep um and so what's her name her name is Lauren. Lauren. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, shout out to Lauren today. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have any children? We do. We have three kids. Uh, my son, Tyler, is 13. My daughter, Avery, is 12. And then uh, my youngest daughter, Emily, is eight. Wow. So you're the quintessential American family. That's right. Yeah. You have yeah. two and a half kids mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> that turned into three. Yep. Um, all right. So now you're in a transitional phase mm -hmm. and so how did we get to what we're doing now so in 2009 uh, my church in arlington had a series where they asked the congregation to submit artwork of christ mm -hmm. and so i thought that was a great opportunity for me to to share the skill that i had developed and so i painted that first picture of jesus and they hung the paintings up at the church and then a couple weeks later, the music minister called me and said, hey, we like your painting. Would you consider doing something like that on stage for us? And I said, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was way outside of my comfort zone. Uh, and so. So those original paintings though, that you did, like the, the one you did for the church, mm -hmm. how many did you do? Did you do one? I or? just did one painting. And yeah. how long did it take you to make it? And it, it was a smaller piece, uh, mm -hmm. you know, 16 by 20. And um, I, I spent about four hours on that first painting. Mm -hmm. And just the, the process of creating it, yep. you know, was really moving for me. Sure. Um, and I think that was the subject matter that really had a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. And at the time, you know, I was really unhappy at work and I was seeking for something yep. else. Yep. And so I, I do believe that God brought this to me at that time uh, for a reason. Yep. And so I took some time and I thought about it and I thought, you know, God has given me this gift. I feel like he's asking me to do something more with it and I want to be obedient. Mm -hmm. 
And so I decided to get up on stage and do it for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I, again, I was moved by that, that moment. And I immediately said, I want to do that again. Mm -hmm. And so I started my ministry, Painted Christ, at that point. And I started uh, developing a website. 2009. Mm -hmm. Started developing a website and uh, more artwork. And nothing happened after that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I put myself out there and there was really no response at first. Why do you think? I, I just, I think I wasn't ready. You know, I didn't know how to promote it. Uh, I didn't know where to start, mm -hmm. really. But I thought, you know, I've got this. I have this ability. I'm just going to leave it out there. And if somebody finds me, great. So the one you did on stage, you did it on stage, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. How long did it take to do it? I had a little bit more time than I usually take now. Uh, it was it was a it was a night where they were reading scripture and there was a quartet on stage. So it was really uh, kind of intimate. Mm -hmm. And so I had about 20 minutes to do that painting. Well, that's a little bit less than four hours. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. yeah. But uh, 20 minutes is a long time in the speed painting world. Yes. Yeah. Well, now you, that, that the cat is out of the bag, so yeah. they speak. Yeah. Uh, so they say uh, speed painting. Mm -hmm. And so is that something that is – did you learn that from someone else? Did you hear about it? How did this all come together? Well, the first time I heard about it was when my music pastor asked me to do it on stage. He showed me a video of some other guy doing it. I was like, oh, I don't know about that. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I just didn't know where to start. How, how do I develop something like that? You know, how am I going to do that? What supplies do I need? And How fast can I do it? Exactly. And how, how fast did they want you to do it? Well, they, they gave me plenty of time. They said, take as much time as you want. Yeah. You know? But, but as that – so tell me the progression. So you, get, mm -hmm. you knock that deal out and then mm -hmm. you get no response. And yeah. It's like, well, I'm a great comedian, but I don't have a stage. Yeah. And so, like I said, I, I just kind of left it out there. And then over the next couple of years, I did maybe uh, two performances the next year. And, you know, these are just people that maybe word of mouth, maybe found me online. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, four the next year after that. And then six the next year. So, I mean, it started to take on a little bit of traction, but it was still nothing that would support us financially so were you still working working I was, I was still in the corporate world yeah still working uh still getting a paycheck my wife has, has been blessed to be able to stay at home with the kids and so it was up to me to to figure this out uh, yeah be the hunter gatherer mm -hmm. and uh and so i i did the corporate job i did the paintings and then i also moonlighted at night doing web design and graphics and logos for other clients keeping the cash flow coming in yeah yeah so did everything i could and you know i was really getting tired of that you know it was really beating me down and that's why i started seeking and you know asking god what what else is there for me out there you know i, I knew that with the way that i felt that wasn't the plan for my life mm -hmm. and so uh, just i knew that this this painting ministry really brought something alive inside of me yep uh, but i just didn't know how to make it work okay so matt i think we have a, a short video we're going to share with our our viewers uh you doing your thing and then we'll talk about that okay <laughs>
Very good. So we wanted to, to and I, I know you have a few photos too. I don't know when you want to show those, just kind of what, what Lance does. Um, and we can do it towards the end or do it during the show either way. So <clears throat> when I saw you at Grace, you uh, basically, if if my memory serves correctly, and, I, and tell me if I'm wrong, you during the live auction, you were doing a, a painting mm -hmm. behind me or to the side of me. Yeah. Is that right? It was, uh, that's typically the way that it's set up is mm -hmm. I, I'm a live auction item. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of stand to the side mm -hmm. while I do my thing, which is about five minutes. Yeah. And then uh, immediately afterwards, auction the art. Yep. It, it was, it's a real cool um, idea. Uh, the method is unique. Um, I was kind of blown away by it, and of course, and that's why I wanted to go to lunch. And you and I had talked about getting together. And, and I had, to be real honest with you, I, I kind of dropped the ball because, you know, you and I had spoken about um, um, I wanted to help you. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I, had, I felt the spirit to sure. help you uh, share your, uh, your talent. And, uh, and and of course, do it in in a in a Christian manner. At the same time, uh, the, your business has expanded uh, because if you got the talent, other people are going to recognize it for other things. Yeah. And so you're you're doing um, you're doing fundraisers and benefits. So where all do you go? Where all have you been? I mean, just kind of. I'll tell you, I did a deal. Um, I was at an inauguration a couple of years ago, and they had a guy doing something similar. And in, in this particular case, this speed guy, uh, speed painter dude, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, did the incoming president, which was quite interesting. And then they, they auctioned it off. I think the only thing that was wrong was that they had the wrong auctioneer. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. Had a good, they had a good artist. Um, but tell me where all you've gone and, and kind of give me the overview of what all you're doing now as far as how far you go and mm -hmm. and the different types of groups you work with and you know kind of what your what your plan is yeah so this started as you know worship service on sunday morning and like you said it's grown into a lot more uh with the ministries and and nonprofits. um i do a, a lot with christian schools catholic schools private schools um, but it's also, there's some secular things that I do as well. Um, um, I do a lot of military fundraisers as well, uh, helping wounded soldiers. As, and, as do I. Yeah. So that's, that's the next connection you, are gonna, you and I are going to have yeah. post this, this uh, particular show. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. And so I've, you know, there's plenty to do here in Dallas alone, in, in Texas alone. Um, but. I do go to other states. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I can rattle off all of them, but uh, I've done fundraisers in Florida, uh, some in Baltimore, mm -hmm. uh, California. Uh, but I've also been on mission trips with this artwork. I've been to Ukraine, where I went with a men's choir, and while they sang, uh, I painted for them. And it was an amazing experience. Sure. And then uh, also most recently went to Germany and Berlin and was painting on the street corner as people walked by and we were able to share the gospel with them right there. So you're you're blessing people, but you're being blessed at the same time. Yeah. I mean, your yeah. your uh, your life, your ministry that you're doing has come full throttle mm -hmm. around, yeah. you know, well, it's something that's completely opposite of of what i was doing in the corporate world i was unfulfilled yep and with this it's so fulfilling you know the fact that i can do what i love and it's impacting others you know that's the sweet spot right there sure what do your kids think kids love it um in fact they they help me a lot you know they, they'll come into my art room at home i don't have a studio i converted a formal living room into my art studio and so uh, they'll come in there and help me paint and always want to do something with me and even when I do events at churches and and, and things like that where they can go with me mm -hmm. you know they'll carry my gear and help me sell merchandise and it's it's very much a family effort well uh, I'm I'm certainly a fan and uh, you've got some things with you. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's look at some of your materials. Um, and I can't see what 
the screen can see it. I'm, I'm looking at my logo. So there we go. There's Lance Brown. Hey, how are you? Uh, we're great. All right. So <laughs> here's a brochure, and I'm just going to show this. And I'm not a great Vanna White, but this is uh, this is one of the pieces of marketing material that Lance has. And uh, it's interesting. I was just looking here. It says if you're looking to use the arts to engage people's hearts, and why wouldn't you? Use everything you can. Lance is a joy to work with and humble servant for our king. From Todd Wagner, uh, executive pastor of Watermark. Uh, and you've got a whole list of folks that uh, endorse you. Um, I, I, you know, a lot of these I know. And it says on here, worship services, conferences, auctions, fundraisers, ministries, conventions, weddings, concerts, staff retreats, student events, youth camps, private parties. And... Um, uh, it does say your. Uh, it does have your website on here, which is the uh, www.paintedchrist.com. And so, um, what have you got coming up? You got some things coming up we can talk about. Yeah, uh, m the one that I have next is in Tennessee. Oh, uh, where? Yeah, I'll be going. It's it's near Nashville. I was just there three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'll be up near Nashville, and it's for a student event. Student group. Mm -hmm. um, if oh, what, let me see this. Well, these are some Bible markers mm -hmm. that I give away. Yep. At events. Whoops, there we go. And so it's like this is like being a um, a weatherman. Yeah. And a green screen. Uh huh. It's very confusing. You know. Oh, I see that. <laughs> yes, I can. Yeah. I could. I, I, You're doing much better than I would. Well, do. one one time I was in uh, New York City. And I went to the Today Show, and um, they picked me out of the crowd to do the weatherman thing mm -hmm. with the green screen. You talk about a bad weatherman. It wasn't good. No? No. They didn't ask you back? They did not They did not invite me back. Yeah. No. In fact, they asked me uh, if I would move so I could get somebody else out there. Yeah. <laughs> sir, we're going to have to ask you to leave. That's right, sir. Yeah. So um, you've got uh, – how many events will you, you think you'll do this year? I would say close to 80 Wow. Events. Yeah, and it's that's been the average the past three or four years. And do you uh, track it? I do. I write down every event and I write down the auction amount of my artwork mm -hmm. each time. And I'm proud to say that uh, since 2015, I've raised over five hundred thousand dollars. Sweet. Just with my artwork. That's great. Yeah. That's great. And so that'll keep the kids in Cheerios. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Which so, is the ultimate. You know, my goal was always to honor God with the gift that he's given me, mm -hmm. but to also take care of my family and help others. And so I think I'm doing that. And so that's, I think that's why it's so fulfilling. Well, uh, you, you've got my personal endorsement uh, for whatever that's worth. Uh, I appreciate that. But I'm going to uh, certainly uh, – we're going to have a conversation before you leave. I'm going to tell you some folks you need to call, and I've already I already gave you one this yeah. morning uh, yeah, I that I that. that I feel very confident would would benefit from what you have to offer. Um, any closing thoughts on your end? Anything you want to share with us? Yeah, um, you know, a lot of people ask me, um, you know, they they want advice on how do how do I find my purpose and um, you know, the fact that I can inspire others, you know, is just the cherry on top. The fact that I can encourage and inspire others. And so, you know, the way that I found what I was supposed to be doing was through prayer and seeking, asking God. But one of the questions that I asked myself was, if money was no object, if money was no issue, what would I do? Mm -hmm. And the answer for me was painting. Yep. And so I knew in my heart that that was what I wanted to do, but I didn't know what the next step was. So I just kept going in that direction until the time was right. And I ended up walking out of my corporate job in 2014 and God opened all the doors. Yeah. And so he just led me on that path and it was up to me to make the choices that I needed to make. Yeah, I think we all come to the fork in the road Mm -hmm. It happened to me when I was 19 years old. Yeah. I had to make it. I had had great opportunities, and uh, one one was uh, in the direction of what I thought I wanted to do, yeah. and then this this auction life happened. Mm -hmm. And so, um, 
I look at it this way. I'm a very, a very failed individual, but I feel like uh, I'm at my very best when I'm doing good things for other people. Mm -hmm. And that's that's really my happy place yeah. is when I am working with people like you, uh, working with my nonprofits, uh, working with um, the, the hospice groups or the dementia groups or the uh, the kids that are going to Christian schools mm -hmm. and, and able to get uh, – you know the the foundation because yeah. because we live in a very very challenging world. Where do you live? I live in Arlington. You um, you like Arlington? I do. Yeah, yeah, it's a great central location in the Metroplex and uh, fifteen minutes from the airport. So yeah. yeah, I'm all about that. Easily accessible. Yeah, yeah, and then it's just a great community where we are. Yeah, well, Arlington's the fastest. You know, other than Frisco and and up in that area, you know, Arlington. Is going to run out of land sooner or later. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. there's only so many theme parks <laughs> yep. and sporting teams you can exactly. you can put up. But uh, no, I think that's great. I look forward to seeing you at, at future events. And mm -hmm. and I would just say for the folks that are watching right now, if you're uh, looking for some um, someone unique, different, and special, if you're doing a, a philanthropic event, a 501c3, something that is going to inspire people, it's going to excite them. Um, you know, there's a Dallas is Dallas Fort Worth in general is a very giving community, and I'm involved in many many um, events that um, basically circle around raising funds to help people. And I would just say, if you're having a live auction, or if you're not having a live auction, maybe you want something special and different, but you know you want to sell one live auction item. Um, I, I've already seen it. I've already witnessed it. Uh, it, it it will touch you. Uh, God will touch you through His work. And uh, he has his own form of ministry, which I find outstanding. And I know the folks at uh, Grace, uh, when they had you on, um, that was that was a, a tipping point for me uh, with you. And uh, and now that we've had a chance to reacquaint, mm -hmm. um, and I have more, my mind is more open to what is possible. Yeah. And I think people need to do that. But if if you're running a group or you know of a group that needs something unique, because I can tell you what, some some of the fundraising, uh, as, as you well know, it, it's rather redundant. Mm -hmm. You know, when people do the same thing every year, it doesn't inspire a crowd. It doesn't yeah. motivate people to do anything. But I think if you can have something unique on stage where someone's making something, building something. Um, and the other thing is when you do these paintings, uh, they're one of a kind based on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, no two paintings are exactly the same. So exactly. it's original artwork yeah. that they can hang on their wall at their home or their office or, you know, pretty much anywhere. Yeah. They've got a retreat somewhere. Um, people, I always tell people about artwork, you know, because artwork can be challenging. It's not as challenging when you see it created. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, there's a story that goes with it too. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I call it a visual storytelling. Mm -hmm. You know, you see one image and it turns into another. Yes. And then uh, flip the painting at the end and you're left with the end result, which is, you know, something that people talk about after the event. Well, one thing about it, you can't buy one of these pieces and not be inspired or feel good when you walk away. Yeah. You can, yeah. You, when you leave, you're going to feel like uh, you, did, you did something really good for the organization and now I have something to not not just feel it but i can see it yeah so well lance brown thank you for being with us it's been awesome uh been very happy to have you on and i'm glad that i have a show where we can demonstrate some of your talents and what yeah. you do and it's uh, uh maybe this is one just one more opportunity for god to to reach into your life and yeah. uh, expose it to many more people and i wish you very well in the rest of 2019 and 2020 and and uh, thank you for being with us today. Yeah, definitely appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Lance Brown, painter, uh, painted Christ. We uh, love having him on today. On behalf of everyone here, Matt, the producer, and all the other folks in at Lincoln Center here at the corner of the Dallas North Tollway and the LBJ Freeway from Dallas, Texas, we love you, bid you adieu, and we'll see you next time. God bless.